that smell! Just like cornbread done to well. Good evening, Metal Faithful. It is I, your man, data reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. And this is the Metal Hammer of Doom. On tonight's show, we are reviewing Sirenia, their newest album, Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations, the 10th studio album by said Gothic metal, Norwegian Gothic metal band, Sirenia which came out on February 12th, 2021. And here to ooh la la at the French girl. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jesse Starcher. How do you do, sir? Oh, my. Mark Radlich. Uh I mean, do you have the name of our French operatic lead vocalist here in Sirenia? I, th- I want to say it's Zoldan. Is that correct? Yeah, Emmanuel Zodan. Oh my goodness! I mean, that is the most beautiful name I think I've ever heard. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and she's, uh, a, you know, a fantastic French opera vocalist, forty-three years old, and she is absolutely stunning. Oh yeah, and there's a, a, a band that she's with too called Sirenia, <laughs> and we're gonna be talking about that tonight. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, so I pitched this. This was like the big. Uh, the big release for February 12th. Among all the things that got released, this one was the one that I think got the most attention. And we like our gothic metal. We like our Norwegian gothic metal here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. So I was like, yeah, we'll give this a whirl and see if it's uh, something that stands out for us. And um, had you ever listened to any Sirenia before? No, no. Very... um, I I mean, I saw that this was their 10th album, so clearly they've been around for quite a while. Uh, and I'm pretty surprised that I've never heard of them going into this. Well, I shouldn't be surprised because you know me every once in a while. Uh, I, I I tend to not uh, have quite the – or I do have the quite – the blind spots, shall we say, uh, in some metal. So Sirenia showing up on my radar, no, never happened before. Yeah, I wasn't tremendously familiar with them. I think I'd probably heard some of their stuff in the past. Um but uh, I, not enough to be like I don't know exactly what they sound like. So, you know, this was this was one where we're like, okay, let's let's give it a whirl. Let's see what let's uh, let's throw it in the bed with Madonna and see if she sleeps with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, hey, I I think it was a great pick in my opinion. I mean, what are we in like three albums now? This so far, this is our third this season or this uh, this year that we've we've reviewed. It was yeah, four. La- like- it was Labyrinth, Weezer, and uh, and this one. Okay. No, this right. is number four because Corporal Connie. So oh, that's right. Labyrinth, well, Weezer, Corporal Connie, and then this one. Okay. All right. Well, I think this is uh, one of the brighter spots uh, here at the beginning of the year for sure. So, I'm ready to talk about it if you are. All right. Yeah. Let's let's not waste any more time. There were three singles that got released. Addiction number one, uh, which is what's going to kick us off here. That was released December eighth, twenty twenty. We come to ruins January twelfth, twenty twenty one, and then their cover from uh, Desireless Voyage Voyage, which was released right before the album came out on February tenth, twenty twenty one. So here we go with the scenario. <laughs> we we've got uh, addiction number one towards an early grave and into infinity. <laughs> Holding to the embrace of fire. 
So, Addiction Number One and Into Infinity are like right in the sweet spot for me. Ah, uh-huh, yeah. What do you think? Like going into this album, when you first put it on, did you get what you were expecting, or did no, you? No, I okay. thought this would be more like Epica, yeah, or um, you know, like Nightwish, that sort of thing. Yep. I was not. I definitely was not expecting. Like you sent me a message about this because you'd listened to it before I did. And you were like, wow, there's industrial elements to this that I did not expect. And I was like, whoo. And then yeah. I heard the album, and I'm like, yeah, man, I'm digging this. Yeah, dude. There's uh, Right there at the beginning, that first track, you, you open it up, and you can tell that this is going to be separate from uh, the expectations of, like, a Nightwish or Epica, for sure. Um, and from what I understand, previous albums, again, I hadn't listened to them, but I was reading reviews about uh, – the uh, the previous albums and it, this is definitely a bit of a departure from uh, some of the stuff that came before. Now, uh, not that just this one album. I think the previous albums had elements of this as well, but they are definitely adding more of the synth pop to uh, their repertoire here in in this album, and I like it. I really did. I dug. Uh, I, I right at the beginning, I was like, okay, I'm digging this. We hit towards an early grave. I'm like, are we going to keep this up? And then we get to Into Infinity. I'm like, okay, man, Into Infinity is probably top three off this album for me. And so of the three tracks, I I dug all three of them. Um, you got some gothic chants in there, so you got your gothic metal. Uh, you have 
I, I don't know if the harsh vocals have showed up yet. We, clearly, the the clean operatic vocals are all over this album and primarily a focus through most of all the tracks. But there are going to be some standout harsh vocals that show up here in a little bit. Um, and we got some fun chugging riffs too, man. I mean, the good thing about this is that a lot of times what I don't like about an Epica or a Nightwish is the focus on the symphonic, the focus on the operatic. In this, it's more metal, which that means that much more to me. I like that. So, I, I yeah, man, I was really impressed with these first three tracks. Yeah, this uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, you know, next to easy listening rap, my other favorite thing is danceable heavy metal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can dance to this. They, they, uh, uh, actually, I watched the video for Addiction Number One, mm -hmm. and our, you know, our lead singer is she's dancing while she's singing, and uh, it's you know this is danceable heavy metal. Yes, sir. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next three tracks. We've got uh, Passing Seasons, We Come to Ruins, and Downward Spiral. Can't escape the cold. No prince starts to fade as the autumn and fall. 
and stuff like that. Well, so our next three tracks here, Passing Seasons, We Come to Ruins, Downward Spiral. Uh, Passing Seasons, uh, this was just immediately off the bat. Again, we open up with like this video audio of a, uh, a video clip. I'm actually fairly certain I've seen the video that's actually being played. Uh, and it's about some people that are uh, tripping on drugs or, or on drugs. Uh, and when you jump into the song and the lyrics, it's a, about somebody who's lost their way in life, I guess you would say, or mm-hmm. at least lost their, uh, lost their drive towards actually living. Um, so again, the goth elements, the sad kind of elements that you usually find in goth metal are, are present uh, in, in the, some of these songs. Uh, passing, or excuse me, We Come to Ruins. Here we get some harsh vocals, buddy. There's a big check in one of uh, Jesse's boxes. If we got the harsh <laughs> and we got the clean, there's a big check right there. Uh, and I really, really dug We Come to Ruins. That may possibly be the song that I pick off this album. And then track six, we're a little bit more than halfway at this point through the album, and it's titled Downward Spiral. Okay. And most of the time, you know, we hit the halfway mark. You're wondering, okay, man, maybe it is going to be a downward spiral spiral after this. But uh, now we get some great uh, alternating male and female clean vocals in that one. Uh, some good stuff. I and I I dug it. I I dug all three. Well, we are at the halfway point, and I I am um, obliged to tell you, listeners of the Metal Hammer of Doom podcast, that. Our great sponsor, Grammarly. Have you heard of Grammarly, Jesse? Do you know what Grammarly is? As a matter is? of fact, I have, yeah. yeah do, you, have. do you use Grammarly at all? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, Grammarly is an AI-powered uh, product that helps people communicate more effectively. Grammarly helps you write mistake-free on Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, which a lot of people need because I'm... <laughs> Our friend of the show, Jason Teasley, could use some Grammarly because he's writing in fucking wind talkers half the time. <laughs> oh wow! We love you, man. But oh, you get some Grammarly in your life. We, we do. We do have to do our own translations and hope we are on point. <laughs> um, I'm sometimes wondering if he's just like typing out hostage letters. <laughs> I'm surprised he doesn't use the random magazine font. <laughs> <laughs> So you can also use it for LinkedIn, uh, nearly anywhere else you want to write on the web. Grammarly corrects hundreds of grammar, punctuation, and spelling mistakes while also catching contextual errors, improving your vocabulary, and suggesting style improvements. So, you know, you're, like me, I, I sometimes struggle for uh, – I want to use an SAT, like high vocabulary, where one that I know, one that I have read, one that I have used, but I'm old and I'm forgetting things. <laughs> and I'm I lose words. I'm, I'm there, sir. And so Grammarly can help you find the words that you lo- that that uh, that you lose. Very useful, very useful tool. I would absolutely agree, 100. percent If you can get your uh, check out Grammarly, if you can get your hands on it, uh, it, it would be uh, asset is probably the best way to put it. Absolutely. Um, so they're offering a free download of Grammarly software now. So to download Grammarly, go to uh, getgrammarly.com slash W2M network. Again, that's getgrammarly, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash W2M network. Uh, and you'll download Grammarly for free. How about that? Fantastic. Check it out, listeners. Absolutely. Um when we come back, we're going to play three more songs, and Jesse's going to hit us with some of those sweet, sweet reviews. I like it. All right. So uh, our next batch of songs here, our next three, go a little something like this. Beneath the Midnight Sun, The Timeless Waning, and December Snow. Boy, is there a lot of December Snow out there now. Hui vey.
some spooky shit right there. Mm-hmm. How are you doing in the December snow, Jesse? Oh, well, hey, we got our furnace fixed today. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty cold week here because we've been dealing with heating issues probably for about a week or so. Are the penguins and, uh, mounting a revolution? <laughs> uh, I try to keep them out of the house. So <laughs> that's that's the uh, important thing. Penguins uh, like tied penguins... up. Penguins tied up Colton and ran off of him. <laughs> Get back here. That's my son. <laughs> uh, so you want to talk about reviews? I got a few here for you. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got some numbers and I got some quotes too. So uh, Apocalypse Later Music. Uh, Apocalypse Later Music dot com. Eight out of ten. So that's pretty. Most of most of what we're going to see is actually pretty favorable here. Uh, one of the things that they had quoted and I, I wrote down here. It's it's kind of telling of the album. It says what's telling is they're talking about. Um, they were kind of contrasting previous albums with this one but they say what's telling is, is that it is difficult to call out the heaviest track or the poppiest because the two are, the two are so fundamentally linked so i definitely get a pop edge out of a lot of this doesn't mean that this is a uh, something that completely belongs on the radio but i think you can definitely pick a song off of here and toss it out there uh but yeah you know there are there are really some pop elements all over this album uh but i to, for me myself i agree with it's more metal than it is pop in my opinion um metal express radio gives it an 8.2 out of 10 uh, this is where I was pulling some of the information about previous albums. They say, within the last five years, they've added electronic elements resulting in an upbeat illusion than their prior efforts. Blabbermouth gave it a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, they stated, in capable hands, tiny changes can make a huge difference. Sirenia have embraced a noticeably more modern sound with frequent presence of skittering sequenced electronics, one of the more dramatic developments. Uh, they also embrace the pop aesthetic that has served the likes of Beyond the Black so well. Loudersound.com gives it a three and a half out of five. Uh, they called it symphonic metal colliding with 80s synth pop. And then you, UncivilRevolt.com gave it an 8.4 out of 10. So across the board, I mean, we're, we're seeing seven and sevens and eights. Uh, positive feedback, in my opinion, for this album. No, nothing below a five. Nobody hated it. Uh, I don't know if Angry Metal Guy covered it. I know I was scouring the internet there earlier just to see, uh, and I didn't see that that site come up. So, but yeah, man. I, I mean, just from what I can see, most of the metal review community are embracing this with open arms. Well, if you want to check out this album. Uh, after listening to our podcast tonight, which sampled some of the songs, if you want to go back and uh, stream this album, buy this album for uh, for yourself, you can actually go to Amazon Music dot uh, Amazon com. As a matter of fact, if you sign up for Amazon Music dot com, you go to get Amazon Music dot com slash W two M Network. Uh, you can get Amazon Music free for 30 days, and you can check out all the Serenia and all the other bands that we review here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Did you know that, Jesse? I had no idea. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, Serenia is right there on Amazon Music. AmazonMusic.com actually has all, pretty much everything that we've been discussing. I mean, they don't have John Cougar Concentration Camp, but who does? <laughs> Bit of an acquired taste, I <laughs> Yeah, imagine. it's a hidden gem is what it is. <laughs> But for the more uh, for, for the more standard for the more uh, well known stuff like Epica, uh, Sirenia, all these other bands that we Corporal Clawney, that's all on AmazonMusic.com. Very good, very good. So um, now that I've done the requisite number of plugs, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to say I'm really enjoying enjoying this album. Um, we're actually down to the very last of the proper tracks, track 10, this, this Curse of Mine. And then there's a bonus track, Voyage Voyage, which is by the band Desireless. And I'll tell you, you can put me down for Beneath the Midnight Sun for probably my favorite track on here. You know, I was listening to it and I was like, this is the kind of stuff, like, f this album, for me, um, 
it's triggering like the old me that used to go out dancing. Oh like, yeah, yeah. There are definitely songs on here that I used to like dancing to back when I was going to goth and industrial clubs. And so there's def- definitely been a lot of those elements in this album. And the more of those elements that are present, the better I like the song. Okay, very good. All right, you ready to listen to the last two? Let's close her out, buddy. I promise I have no more ads to read. <laughs> all right, then. Very good. <laughs> and then we'll plug all of our other shows on the network at the end. All right, so he had This Curse of Mine and Voyage Voyage. All right, Jesse, um, kind of a short show tonight, a uh, pretty simple review, you know, nothing especially um, outstanding in terms of, you know, being diff- tremendously different from the other stuff that we tend to review on here. But I mean, as far as did I like the album, D- didn't I like the album? Is it competent? Was it well done? I would think it checks all the boxes. Sure. Sure. I mean... For me, I can see that there's a lot of production value in this album. There's definitely uh, there's a sound that I really enjoy uh, on here, and it's so funny because I was I, I came into this expecting something completely different and ended up with something that I was really really pleased with. Uh, so Serenia has my at- attention. That's mm-hmm. for sure. I'll be looking for whatever the next album is that they drop just to see if they uh, do anything different then. But uh, if they keep the same sound and maybe metal it up just a little bit more, I'm going to enjoy that album as well. Uh, Voyage Voyage, by the way, Desireless is actually the name of a French singer. Uh, her name... Ooh la la. Uh, yeah, Claudie Fritsch. 
Mintrop, this song went number one in uh, European and Asian single charts, uh, and I think this was 1988. Well, they said it was between 1986 and 1988 uh, uh, was... Uh, the the big time for her but her hit single voyage voyage made it to number one there uh so i and it's funny because when i hit the end of this album i was like this feels like a cover but obviously she's singing in french i have no idea what she's saying which by the way the elvish that i told you offline that's french uh so she was not speaking <laughs> elvish in our ear <laughs> she was not nice. whispering sweet elvish in my ear i she think was, that's <laughs> racist I'm not sure. <laughs> tell, tell the elves to at me on Twitter. I will absolutely. Uh, now uh, now yeah. I'm going to upset people who identify as elves. I, well, um, I was going to say, I think you have less of a problem with elves and more of a problem with the snooty French. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, so I, I enjoyed this. I, I come out of this. I'm picking, uh, I'm picking the We Come to Ruins track as uh, the one I'm putting on our playlist. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll definitely be interested to see what they drop next. I'm glad we had the opportunity to review them tonight. Absolutely. All right, man. Um, so we're going to skip a week. I'm not going to do any Metal Hammer of Doom next week. Instead, I'm going to have Jesse come on and do a TV party. I can only get Jesse once a week unless he's, like, doing podcasts on the side, cheating bastard that he is. <laughs> one, one podcast a week. For Mark, anyway. <laughs> yeah. He, he likes to spread himself around. A little Lexus over here. A little <laughs> Chris Armstrong over here. Yeah. That's right. Um, but uh, I only get him once a week. And um, we're going to do the uh, Ed Brubacher written show for Amazon Prime. Uh, Too Old to Die Young. Because uh, we're dedicating a whole week to stuff related to Ed Brubacher. Brubaker. Nice. So, Very nice. Brubacher Brubaker. Um, yeah, you know, I thought about doing this a couple months ago, and I was like, yeah, I kind of want to... We hadn't done, like, an Alan Moore month kind of thing in a while, and I was like, well, let me, you know, like, there's nothing that particular week to really focus on, at least there wasn't at the time. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to pick an author and just sort of, like, see what all the stuff that he did, and let's take a look at it. So we're going to look at one of his um, award-winning books, Scene of the Crime. We're going to look at a show that he wrote um, that wasn't actually based on a comic book. It was just a, you know a show that he wrote uh, separately from his work in comics. And then the director of that show directed a movie called Only God Forgives, which I'm going to put on trial with uh, Sean Comer. So okay. that's what we've got going on next week. Uh, however, we will be back on March 3rd. Uh, Epica has a new album coming out. It's called Omega. It comes out February 26th. And uh, that's also on, that'll also be on AmazonMusic.com, by the way. Okay. Um, so you can check it out there. And uh, we'll review it for you on March 3rd. So check out Epica Omega on March 3rd. Um, we got A Day to Remember. Uh, you're, you're the best. No, you're welcome. Ah. Which comes out March 5th. We'll review it on March 10th. And then we have a very special show coming up, Jesse. We're celebrating yet another holiday on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Can you believe it? Oh, no, I cannot believe it. What is it? Yes, sir. It's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, get, boy. You and I, we're going to drink some Guinness and get drunk. Have some cabbage? Yes, Corn sir. Beef? Corn beef. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk Fiddler's Green. Three cheers for 30 years. Oh, all St. right. St. Patrick's Day. Hot diggity damn. Oh, um, my shit kickers, and I'll kick some shit. Hot damn. That's we're going to jump around. <laughs> boom, shit lock, lock, boom. Um... Irish reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leprechaun. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we come back on uh, March 24th, and we got Rob Zombie, the Lunar Ejection, Kool-Aid, oh. Eclipse, Shoes, Forest, Moon. <laughs> Not, cannot <laughs> wait for this album. Cannot wait. Grammarly. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, please. Please, someone, at least gift him. A Grammarly. <laughs> yes. Get Rob Zombie Grammarly. <laughs> uh, and then we close up the month of March on the Metal Hammer of Doom with Tomahawk, Tonic Immobility. So if you've been missing, if you've been missing the 605, no, if you've been missing the Metal Hammer of Doom, you're like, I'm not enough Metal Hammer in my Doom, not Metal Hammer of Doom in my life. We got Epica, A Day to Remember, Fiddler's Green, Rob Zombie, and Tomahawk all in the month of March. That is five weeks of metal up your ass. Right up the a poop yeah. shoot. Yep. Sit and spin. <laughs> <laughs> On some metal. Nice. Yes, sir. All right. Um, 
in the meantime, in between time, uh, you can check out Ronnie Adams and I had a fun conversation on the the show Stumptown. We also talked the comic in which it was based on the first volume of it. So those podcasts are up there. We have the pods have been reviewed. NXT Takeover Vengeance Day. Um, myself, Alexis Hanna, and Robert Winfrey reviewed Willie's Wonderland. Uh, Robert Winfrey and Sean Coleman reviewed Space Sweepers. Um, so those are all in the archives. And tomorrow, because I got nagged to death by Alexis to do this, uh, we're going to look at some prestige film, Jesse. Woo! Ooh, an ooh, Oscar that nominee. Hoity-toity. Yeah, it's the hoity toitiest. <laughs> Myself and Alexis Haina, these uh, cisgendered white folks, are going to review Judas and the Black Messiah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it should be it should be an entertaining uh, discussion. Yeah, it won't be tone deaf at all. No. None. <laughs> whatsoever. And, and uh, But here's the show I've been pushing all week, assuming it actually happens. My daughter is entering the podcast world with a plum. Oh, wow. She pitched Demon Slayer. Okay. She said, I want to watch Demon Slayer with you, and then we must talk about this. And I said, okay. And I told everyone in the podcast crew that my daughter and I were going to be doing a Demon Slayer podcast, and two old men showed up with chocolates <laughs> and flowers for a 10-year-old girl. I don't know why. And, <laughs> and they said, we want to be a part of this. Oh, that. Yeah, that's going to be a fun discussion. I think, uh, you know, getting a, a take from a kid uh, about a program and uh, I want to see so Winfrey's in on this right is Winfrey yeah, in on this it's Winfrey and David Wright I want to see if Winfrey pulls any punches on criticism just because <laughs> you know of who's involved in the podcast or if he will if he will absolutely stick to the shtick mm -hmm. you little girl are a dumbass that's what I'm waiting for <laughs> Oh, Winfrey, wait, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I don't give a shit what you like. <laughs> Let's take a step back. I have never, I have never heard him at least call another podcast host a name, as far as I could tell. Well, then again, you've been on a lot of podcasts with him, and you've aggravated him immensely. But I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's going to translate to your daughter in any way. Uh, that's hilarious. Um... <laughs> It, you know, I, I, he he'll be fine. David will be fine. It'll be a fun discussion. I, th yes, I think the I think the hardest part about it is going to get my daughter to like uh, get her elocution down so that she's well understood and get her oh, to I, be able I, to trust formulate me, I'm her still thoughts. struggling with that. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's not have too high a hopes. Give her give her a little bit. Oh, uh, wait a second. She's she's not from Appalachia, so she'll be all right. Now, Lily, the walls in the mall are totally, totally tall, for sure. Say it with me. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, you ever get your daughter uh, on one of these podcasts? Yeah, I mean, there's one podcast from 2015, 2016. Really? Uh, yeah, where it was a Father's Day special of uh, source material where she called in to the old blog talk, and we had a discussion about phoebe and her unicorn uh and we actually tweeted that to the creator of that book who listened i put this in quotes she told us she did but she said she was smiling ear to ear after listening to uh kira and i discuss the the book so did that one time and uh, i haven't since then i've always wanted to which is you know one of those things where got to set aside time and something to talk about yeah time time is a fleeting mistress <laughs> indeed <laughs> all right, that's all I got going on. Those are all the plugs. Joe, what do you got going on? What are what other stepping out are you doing on me? <laughs> well, uh, listen, the hot podcast right now for February is Alexis and myself discussing Hell of a Boss, the pilot, all the way up through the third episode, a YouTube animated series. Uh, it was a fun discussion. I didn't know what I was going to get when I uh, when she suggested it. This was one of those things where I. Uh, the, our first ever NFL wager, which I'm sure will probably happen again in the future, and the Browns lost. Surprise, surprise! So she got to choose the topic. We discussed hell of a boss. If you like animation, if you like YouTube uh, animation, Vivzy Pop, uh, you can check that out. Uh, we also dropped our unspoken issues number 25, the Savage Dragon number 13. Jim Lee took on. The Savage Dragon. Image X month happened where all the creators, six of the creators, swapped books for a month. 
and it was really interesting to see the contrast of Eric Larson stepping off of the book for a month and then letting Jim Lee take over. And he was so excited about it, Eric Larson said, no, I'm going to do another issue 13. <laughs> <laughs> so he did a second one uh, because he didn't. He wasn't too. He was. I wouldn't say he wasn't impressed. It was just that he he had uh, he had goals that he wanted to continue uh, attain, and one of those was to do a hundred straight issues of Savage Dragon. And then when he realized he gave over the reins for a month for an issue, he's like, nope, nope, nope. I'm doing another issue thirteen. So there's two Savage Dragon thirteens out there, and you can hear all that story on our unspoken issues. It's only about a half hour long. Quick injection of comic podcast goodness and i think that's about it for the last week anyway i'm sure there's going to be an upcoming uh source material syndicated source material i think one just dropped for house of m on the 6th of february coming up will be a uh what would that be two weeks from that day that'd be the 20th this coming saturday what do we got coming up for that let me take a look i will tell you right in a moment it is going to be syndicated source material episode seven, Batman Year Two. Speaking of Todd McFarlane and the Image Bros, Todd McFarlane took over Batman uh, for uh, at least did some did some stuff on Batman. This is early Todd McFarlane work, so if you get a chance, I think this was just a solo for me. So that was the seventh episode that launched on the Bradlich and Broadcasting Network. I'm done, Mark Bradlich. Let's get out of here. All right, sir. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Uh, join us again in two weeks when we talk Epica Omega. Until then, he's Jesse Starcher. I'm Mark Rattledge. Be well, be safe, and behave.